Hey everybody, Casey here. Welcome to my channel. Um, here I just wanted to show you all another process video of working in my journal that I am using photos for some memory keeping and our journaling. So I'm doing some mixed media with some photos. So we went to, my husband and I, when I say we, I mean the two of us, we went on an anniversary trip to Brimfield, um, Massachusetts, um, to the antique show. And um, I wanted to document some of those photos that I took at the antique show. So here I'm just trying to look through and see what photos I wanted to use. I loved that photo of the towers of crates and um, I was trying to figure out how I could cut them out so that they would just be like a freestanding tower of crates obviously a photo of that um, and then that green and blue those green and blue papers there they were the parking passes that we um, had to purchase for the two days that we went to the antique show. So I wanted to use them in my um, in my journal. And my idea was to use the one photo of the colored crates as a pocket for the parking passes. So here I am just rummaging through some of my stash to find some old book pages. I always like to start out with collage. Um, that darker brown bag there um, was from an actual bag that I got at the Brimfield Antique Show. I probably got like a book or something and was given that bag. So I definitely wanted to use that. Um, so I'm just collaging. I like to collage um, first as a foundation for my pages there's just something about collaged pages so here I realize that oh great my dog is barking at fireworks um, it is 4th of July weekend and there is going to be fireworks all weekend long so my dog is freaking out so I apologize for my barking dog Anyway, I was saying that I realized I had doubled up on the book page there, that it was stuck together, so I tore from two pages. I really apologize with my dog, and no one else is here to quiet him down. My two-year-old is in bed, and my husband and my son are at um, a minor league baseball game. So, I do have more kids, but two of them don't live here, and one of them is house-sitting for one of my other kids. If that even makes sense, yes, that's confusing. I know. Um, so, if you can ignore my dog barking, um, that would be great. Hopefully, I can ignore my dog barking. They do not like fireworks. I'm sure if you have dogs and... Um, you live in an area where there's fireworks ever going off, your dogs probably don't like them either. I don't know a dog that enjoys fireworks at all. So anyway, moving along. Um, I'm just working on some, uh, some collage here, just trying to figure out what um, feels right and seeing where my photos are going to go so that I can see what collage papers in the background are going to be peeking through. I definitely was trying to cover up some of those um, darker black ovals there that just really stand out and I didn't want them to. So I was trying to get rid of some of that knowing that my photo will, will cover most of it. So that's a good thing. I'm pretty sure my dogs are going to have a rough night. Anyway, um, 
And now I'm going to be adding some white gesso around the edges of the collage just to kind of soften those edges and blend the collage papers all together with the background pages. It just seems to mesh everything together nicely. And I really wanted to um, cover up some of those darker ovals as well. I didn't want the eye to be drawn to those to those spaces. If my white gesso will ever come out, I think it's soon time for a new one. I certainly won't turn down a trip to Michael's. I do like to use my fingers. I feel like I have better control. Um, it also might be because my brushes are pretty crappy. I have really used my brushes and um, they're most likely in dirty water as well. So fingers will do. Um, I just squirted on some clear gesso there and I am brushing that on um, to cover the entire page as my plan is to be using coffee as watercolor and that way the clear gesso protects the pages um, from the coffee or like watercolor um, seeping through to the other side. So I wanted to dry it a little bit before I um, added um, some, some of the coffee or watercolor. I was trying to figure out if I wanted any book pages behind the photo pocket instead of just having the photo like right on the page but I didn't like the book pages behind it. I think here I was trying to decide like what color I wanted to add in the background. I was contemplating adding some craft paint and I wanted to try to figure out what color I wanted to use. So I was just kind of staring at the photos. I decided on, I believe that is natural buff. It's just cheap craft paint. And again, using my fingers, I just like the way that it blends when I'm finger painting. Tapping into my eight-year-old self. Sometimes I overdo it a little bit with the paint and I lose a lot of my white spaces. So you can always just come in and add a little bit more white gesso. I wanted to cover up a little bit more of those um, of the text and just have it kind of peeking through and not be quite as noticeable. I kind of wish those parking passes weren't such bright colors as I'm not a huge fan of bright colors, but it is what it is, and um, they're little keepsakes, so I'm using them regardless. I realized there as I was thumbing through past pages that that photo wasn't glued properly, so I had to take care of that really quickly before I forgot. I was also trying to figure out um, if I wanted to add some stamp tissue paper, but I decided not to and I added some scribbles instead. I never usually like my scribbling. I enjoy scribbling, but I don't know that I like the look of the way it is on my pages. I kind of felt like there needed to be some, some lines blocked off or, or squares blocked off or however you want to say that. Um, on these pages for some reason, maybe because of the um, sharper 
edges of the crates, you know, the rectangular boxy form of the crates. So I wanted to add that um, in the background. So I used the black Stabilo All pencil and then activated it with um, some water on a paintbrush to get that brighter color, that bold black. I really like the way that um, turned out, the way that looks. Back to uh, drying with my good old hair dryer that one of my Chinese host daughters that I hosted several years ago left behind at my house and it is certainly serving a purpose for me now. I just love the way that tower of crates on the left hand side looks. I could have done that as well with the um, photo on the right, but I didn't because I wanted it to be the pocket, although I probably could have cut um, the top, that white kind of canopy that was in the background. Um, I could have probably cut that, but too late now. I wanted to add some more color um, to the background, so I tried to pull out some blue from the crates. And since one of those parking passes is a brighter blue, so I went with mixing some green and blue um, to get um, a nice color in watercolor. I feel like when I watercolor on my pages or I use coffee on my pages, I tend to go to the same location on my pages. Like I never change it up. I just do like the same thing over and over. So I really need to try to like do something different. More drying. Maybe one day I'll get an actual heat tool that um, heats things up or I shouldn't say heats things up, dries my pages quicker than this hair dryer. But I definitely wanted to make sure that the background was dry before I used Mod Podge for my photos. I don't know that Mod Podge is the greatest glue to use for photos. Um, I do find that the photos get a little bit wrinkly or kind of lumpy, but my pages are that way anyway because I'm doing mixed media on thin, thinner vintage paper and my pages get kind of crinkly and lumpy anyway. So I'm not sure that changing the glue would, um, would help that or not. If anybody has tips on that, I would love to hear. You can just comment on, um, on the video. That would be great. I wanted to really um, kind of set that um, tower of crates more into the page and um, but have it like kind of lift off at the same time so I used a charcoal pencil and went around the edges and smudged it with my finger and then did the bottom like kind of for a shadow effect I definitely think it made a difference for that tower of crates to um, be more cohesive in the page. I'm using tacky glue to fasten the um, picture to the photo to the page. I had to look for my big needle that I sew signatures into my journals to um, open up the tacky glue because it was it had some hard glue in there and it, the glue wouldn't come out so i'm using the tacky glue because i'm making that a pocket 
So um, I didn't wanna use the Mod Podge because I just wanted that thin layer of glue around the outsides to make the pocket. I love green, it's my favorite color, but that green is a lot for me. So I wanted the green to be behind the blue. That white tag was from um, a plaid vintage cooler that I bought at the Brimfield Antique Show. I saved the tag and I wanted to tuck that in the pocket as well. And my pages wouldn't be my pages without some coffee in there. There's just something I love about using coffee. I can't drink it. I can't have the caffeine in it because it gives me terrible vertigo, found out the hard way. Um, but I can certainly use it for my art. Here I'm like trying to decide if I wanted to do anything else. Um, on the pages. I do like how that photo um, as a pocket looks with those little bits tucked inside. I was just kind of like staring at the pages to see what else does it need? Black ink splatters or stamping or who knows? I did settle on some black ink splatters. That's why I pulled out my little um, water bottle cap. Here I'm showing you the passes and the tag. But that water bottle cap is what I put my black ink in. Um, just a little drop of it and I get a wet paintbrush and just splatter on my pages, of course, covering the photos so that I don't get ink on the photos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.